Hey everyone, we are looking at the derivative of an integral, and that might sound like a weird thing to do. Because, like, aren't those backwards from each other? They're opposites? If you derive something and then you integrate it, or if you integrate it and then you derive it, aren't you just back to where you were before? Actually, basically you are, except the chain rule. The chain rule's still around. Okay, so looking at the official math language of it, this property is called the fundamental theorem of calculus, derivative of an integral form. And it states this, if g of x equals the integral from a to x of f of t dt, where a is a constant, so a is some number, then g prime of x is just f of x. And you're probably looking at that going, huh? Let's just take a look at this in action. Let's say we have g of x equals the integral from 4 to sine x of 3t squared dt. And we're going to find g prime of x. So let's just first start by integrating. So we have g of x equals, the in, if we integrate 3t squared, we get t cubed, and our bounds are 4 to sine x. In case you're wondering, by the way, about the fact that we're going to a function at the top, for whatever reason, this derivative of an integral form, it always is going to look like this, a number in the, on the, for the lower bound a con, of some sort of function on the upper bound. Okay, so g of x then is plugging in sine x. So I have sine x getting cubed minus 4 getting cubed. And if I derive this guy, I get g prime of x equals, well, I get 3, derivative of the outside, keep the inside the same to the second, and then times derivative of the inside gives me a cosine x. And then the derivative of 4 cubed is 0. So here I am. So now the question is, is there a shortcut? Because it seems kind of weird to go integral derive. Because we're backing things up and just, yeah, seems silly. So look what we have here. Going back to the beginning, look where this sine x went. It went in to t right here. And then it also in a kind of convoluted way, basically it's the chain rule in action, it goes into dt as well, right here. So we basically have a shortcut. If we want to do a problem like this, we don't have to integrate just to derive it. And in fact, a lot of the times when these problems are presented to you, it's something you can't integrate. For example, looking at the second example, we have the integral from 7 to x cubed of secant t dt. Well, I don't know what secant integrates to. But if I'm going to integrate it and then derive it, I'm going to be back to where I started. So we can totally kind of cheat on this, take this x cubed, plug it in for t, and also we'll plug it, the derivative of it in for dt. So g prime of x is secant of, plug that x cubed in for t, and then plug the derivative of it in for dt. And that's it. So that is how you do the derivative of an integral. You have a total cheat shortcut if you want to consider it that. It definitely works. And it's really good that it works because sometimes you'll be given things you can't actually integrate. You save a ton of time. So derivative of an integral, kind of taking a step forward, taking a step back. You're back to where you started and then you go, ah, chain rule. And that's it.